Hello, and welcome to The Flickering Torch. And if you remember last time I was looking at can paintings be RPGs? Today we're looking at can letters be RPGs? Oh. So today we're looking at the first solo role-playing game I've actually ever played, and that is Quill. We're specifically going to be playing Quill Shadows and Ink, which is kind of an expansion on Quill that basically lets you play cosmic horror. So what is Quill? Well, Quill is, as I've said, a solo role-playing game. So this is a role-playing game you're going to be playing sort of by yourself. You don't need players, you don't need a GM. And it's really, really interesting because unlike other solo RPGs that are kind of like almost choose your own adventure books, at least some of the ones that I've looked at, this is really a proper role-playing game. You're given a goal and you have to achieve it and there's rules to help you point score at the end of it. What are the actual rules in the game? Well, you're going to be writing a letter with a specific purpose to a specific character and you're going to have special rules associated with that. So the scenario we're going to play is Verstalis, um, which is kind of a cosmic horror thing where you've just received a book and now you've basically got to write to an occult expert to try and get them to help. So you try to write this tome to try and gain help from this guy. So how do the mechanics actually work? Well, I'm going to go through and do a whole little playthrough here of the first little bit, so you can watch that right now. To start off, what we're going to do is pick a character, and I have picked the journalist. So I've done this because his penmanship is poor, and my penmanship, I will be entirely honest, is poor. I thought, you know, we would match our skills with our, with our characters there. And he's got a really good language score, which should allow us to get those high-scoring inkpot words. We actually still need to choose a skill, so this expansion has different skills in. We're going to choose Steady Hand to get as a plus one to penmanship. Also, this scenario has some special rules. The first special rule is, in the whole scenario, is you get to choose either you'll be trying to put forward your disgust and disturbance at the text, and you get plus one to your heart rolls, which allows you to do flourishes, or you can try and impress your friend with your knowledge of text and get plus one to languages. Now, we've already got three in languages, so I don't think we really need that. What we're going to do is write our letter. We've got five paragraphs. So I guess in this first paragraph, we're going to want the first ink pot word to choose. So a few of the things here, we've got hello, good day, sold, auctioned, book tome. I think we're going to start with tome. So we're going to make a flourish, I think, to this. So let's roll our three in heart here, a little dice rolling box. Hopefully the camera picks that up. The highest roll we got was a five, so we can make a flourish. Uh, so we're going to go with dusty, decrepit. Um, so we're going to write to our friend, um, Dearest Pierre, not Dearest, I'm, it, it might just start with Pierre. We just want to get, we're going to grab his attention straight away. Uh, so we'll see, we made the first penmanship error over there, but that's fine because we chose a, a character class that is going to make penmanship errors. So really I'm just being authentic, it wasn't, a, it wasn't me being an idiot. So now that we've got Dusty Decrepit, we now need to see if we can use the word book or the word tome that's in our ink pot. So we're going to make another language test, and we've got three in language. And we've got a six, so we can use the word tome. So that's two points there because we used a flourish here, and we use a word from our ink pot here. Right, so here's our first paragraph. Um, Pierre, it is your friend Arland. I am in need of your skills with the occult. A dusty, decrepit tome for which I am at loss to decipher has recently landed in my possession. So this is our first paragraph. So now we need to make a penmanship test, and we got plus one to penmanship from that steady hand feat. We're playing the journalist, so we get to roll two. We got a six there, so that's another point. Right, so this whole paragraph here is worth three points now, because we just got a six on a penmanship test. That's one point. We had a flourish here and a superior word here, so that's two points. So this is a three-point paragraph, so we're just going to put we've got three points to start with. So now we basically continue writing the letter out, rolling dice and scoring points for each time. But I'm not going to sit here and explain that all to you. I'm going to sit and play the game, and then afterwards I'll give you a reading of the whole letter. Okay, so something interesting has happened here. I did a flourish check here because uh, I thought it was going really well. Uh, so I, I succeeded at that and got splintered. But unfortunately for my language test, I actually failed it um, and had to go with piece instead of fragment. So because I went with a flourish and then an inferior word, I get a minus one to this paragraph. So basically this paragraph amounts to nothing now because even though I passed my penmanship test, this is minus one off of that whole thing. Pierre, it is your friend Arland. I have need of your skills with the occult. 
a dusty, decrepit tome for which I am at a loss to decipher, has recently landed in my possession. The arcane illustrations within have kept me awake for many hours. I fear I see them everywhere. One such profane illustration involving a shape which I cannot begin to describe in a way that would make sense to a rational mind particularly haunts me. Pierre, I fear my psyche will be splintered into pieces if I cannot gain the knowledge bound in this leather volume. The Summersby's claimed Vestalis is a 16th century book, but I fear it was much older. I am colossally disturbed by the knowledge that is so close to my reach, but so out of my comprehension, I beg for your help with this matter. You must make every attempt to hastily fly to my flat here in London, for I fear to travel with this item. Others conspired at the Summersby's to obtain it for themselves. Please, Pierre, I beg your assistance. Armed. Right, so at the end of all of that, we scored nine points. So, what are the consequences of this? This is actually a point scoring game. So, all of those points that we just accumulated now basically give us an ending, how, how our letter was received. So that gives us the best ending we can, and that is, it doesn't take long to receive a response from Pierre, who is clearly excited in the way he writes. He had read of Vestalis many years ago. The tome was said to have been a myth, but he always believed there was evidence to suggest that it was real. While he's unsure of exactly what the contents are about, he does believe it to be a magical text. He says he will visit you immediately to see the book for himself. So, we succeeded. PR is going to come to us because of the letter we wrote. It was super fun to play. I really enjoyed the book. I, I'm not a massive fan of the scenarios in the basic quill, but this sort of shadows and ink mysterious cosmic horror thing really just had all the right strings for me to have a really good experience on my own. It was just kind of a nice thing to do on this Saturday morning, sit here and write a letter. Um, I haven't done creative writing in a really long time, so it was, it was yeah, genuinely really, really fun. How do the mechanics hold up? Well, they're really simple, but I think you kind of want that for a solo experience. Especially the way the mechanics worked for me really worked well, giving me that bank of words, because that bank of words also kind of worked like a prompt in my head of, of things I could be writing about. Really, really loved that. And the kind of risk-reward of putting flourishes in was really, really, really cool. The penmanship test? Eh. I feel like maybe we could do something else with the penmanship test. Maybe every time you have to cross something out, it's like a damage to your penmanship, and then your penmanship test can, like, get rid of those if you've got a high one. I don't know, something like that would be more kind of thematic, because I got a lot of penmanship test positives in that. The penmanship in that letter is... Yeah, it's not great, is it? Um, there's, like, scribbled out stuff and all of that nonsense where I forgot how the English language was spelled. Uh, thank God for spell check. Quill is really, really cool. I think I'm probably going to play through the rest of this Quill Shadows and Ink campaign. I might even do a stream. I think this is something that would be quite nice, a little stream. So, let me know if you've played any solo RPGs and if there's anything I should check out in the genre. I guess the next thing I could do on this weird series that I've started, I guess, is can music be a role-playing game? I've not heard of one, but please send them on in if you've got them. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the flickering torch. Also you can follow me on Twitter at the flickering torch where sometimes I get a little bit tipsy and then I do a tweet. Um, I forgot to say this on the first recording, so hopefully the lighting matches the same, um, but this video was inspired by Lubuffin, I believe is how you pronounce. Uh, a link is going to be in the description to her playthrough of Quill. She was playing a different expansion called Love Letters, and it's a really great video and kind of inspired me to buy this game and play it here. So please check her stuff out. Link in the description. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you check out Quill. It's very cool. And I'll catch you next time. Happy gaming.